Welcome to Croft Circuit in North Yorkshire for the ninth and final round of the 2018 Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship in partnership with Toyo Tyres. Several champions are set to be crowned among a large entry of Rallycross cars of all shapes, sizes and ages here today with a number of international guests among the regular entry set to race here on this tricky Croft Circuit. We begin the action with a lap of the circuit. Our regular chauffeur this season has been Dan Beatty, and he takes us around to show us this Croft circuit in his Subaru down the tarmac main straight into the right-hander at Clervo, then into the little chicane. This leads the cars onto the long right-hander at Hawthorne Bend, taking the cars towards the back straights. And it's into the uh, flick through the old chicane, right and then left. That takes them onto the loose. Down the back straight gets fairly uneven here as the day goes on. Some drivers call this the Big Dipper, but the track has been improved slightly for this year. Then it's onto the brakes for the hairpin past the PA commentary box. Lowest speed part of the circuit, back over another loose section, then towards the finish line and back to the tarmac for another lap. That's a lap of the Croft. Rallycross Circuit, courtesy of Dan Beatty, the production 4x4 runner. We begin the action with the HT Installations Junior Rallycross A Final. Three different winners in the heats. Tom Constantine in pole position alongside Morgan Roots and Luke Constantine. Now, if Luke wins this, he's almost guaranteed the overall BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship for 2018. He is in the yellow and black car on the outside of the front row. He's made a great start down into the first corner at Clervo, gets the lead. Sun now out at the end of the day. It was snowing when the cars arrived here this morning. Got a tangle further back in the order. Ben Sayers goes spinning. Contact there with Patrick O'Donovan in the 131, the young Irishman. First time racing at the BTRDA Clubman's Rally Cross Championship today. But it's Luke Constantine out in front looking for nine round wins out of nine this year. If he wins this, he will take the provisionally take the overall championship. James and Tom Constantine side by side for second. This class has been almost a benefit to the Constantine family this year. The only driver really able to challenge them being Morgan Root. He's there in fourth place as they come round to complete the first lap. A good entry of nine cars here today in the HT Installations Limited Junior Rallycross category. All of them in Suzuki Swifts bar one. That's Amy Baines in her Vauxhall Corsa towards the back of the field. Luke Constantine leads by just under a second ahead of Tom at the end of the first lap then. James in the green and grey car in third place. They're already clear of the rest of the field round. Hawthorne Bend for the second time. The only driver that's really challenged Luke in the overall points this year across all the classes has been super modified runner Tony Lynch and he lost his win on a stewards inquiry from the previous round at Blyton so as Luke Constantine wins this he will provisionally win the overall title. Constantine's driving in formation at the front then it's Morgan Root in fourth Patrick O'Donovan is in uh, fifth position mixed in the order looks like it's uh, Eleanor Corner her dad uh, Guy Corner has raced in the super modified category in the past. The other runners being Matilda Proctor, Amy Baines and Ben Sayer, who we saw spin on the first corner. 1.4 seconds is now the lead margin. As the Constantines pull clear of the rest of the pack. In the old chicane. The Rally Cross here at Croft all the way since the 1960s on various circuit layouts. It was closed for a time in the 1990s when the uh, tarmac race circuit was rebuilt to host touring car racing. The new pit complex was built, which cuts a little out of the end of the lap. The cars used to go straight on a little more where this uh, hairpin is and then into a complex at the uh, end of the lap known as the Mad Hatter complex. We know not why. Patrick O'Donovan all over the back of Morgan Root there for fourth place as uh, Luke and Tom Constantine pull away at the front of the field, into lap four of six now. Through Clervo, less than a second between the leaders. They pulled away from James Constantine in third, then the battle between Root and O'Donovan. Eleanor Corner, not far behind them, is the first of the girls. Good to see three uh, young ladies in this field. Really inspired by uh, the Bellabys, Paige and Drew Bellaby, who uh, found plenty of success in running across. We'll see their dad, Dave, out in the super modified category today as well. The 
lead has increased very slightly for Luke Constantine as he goes round the right-hander at the hairpin. That's the assembly area. Morgan Root coming under fire again from Patrick O'Donovan. And bash, he pushes him wide there on the hairpin. That was more like stock car racing than rallycross. And Patrick O'Donovan is through into fourth position as a result. But it's still Luke Constantine in front. Half a second or less than that clear of uh, Tom Constantine in second. Round Hawthorne Ben they come. James still in third, but on his own now. Luke's just got to hang on here and he's going to be the overall champion. It's the first year that junior drivers have been eligible to win the overall Autosport International DTRDA Clubman Rally Cross Championship. The four by four categories included in the overall points as well this year. Down the hairpin they come. A battle further back between Amy Baines and Ben Sayer recovering after that first lap spin. The leaders lost their last lap now. Amy Baines in the black course of her first season of Rallycross, switched from autocross racing on the grass. O'Donovan still fourth ahead of Morgan Root. Here's the battle between Baines and Sayer side by side as they head down towards the hairpin. Amy Baines, oh, she's going off on the inside of the hairpin, just avoids the tyres there. And I think she's held the place as well. Ben Sayer trying to move up on the outside as they head towards the start of their last lap. The leader's already well into their last lap. There's Matilda Proctor in seventh place. Her father, Kevin Proctor, a long time, but Rally Crosser as well. Constantine's out in front once again. Is Tom going to get round the outside here? He gets sideways, nearly got through. But it's going to be Luke heading for the win. Tom has one last look at the inside. He's not going to get through. And Luke Constantine makes it nine of a final wins out of nine this year. And provisionally is the overall champion. What a drive from the man in his first season of motorsports. James Constantine makes it a family one, two, three. And then it's going to be Patrick O'Donovan in fourth place. Ahead of in fifth, Morgan Root. Sixth goes to Eleanor Corner. Seventh, it's going to be Matilda Proctor, and they're still at it for eighth and ninth place. Amy Baines looks like he's just about going to hold, hold off Ben Sayer for that eighth position as they cross the line. Great racing from the HT Installations Junior Rallycross category with the win going to Luke Constantine. Nine out of nine, a final victories this year. A family one, two, three with Tom and James in second and third. Patrick O'Donovan, the best of the rest in fourth, Morgan Root and Eleanor Corner completing the top six places. And that means that uh, Luke Constantine will win the overall title while uh, James and Tom in the juniors. Tom taking the uh, top placing with Luke ineligible to win the category as he is the overall champion. Morgan Root taking third in the junior points. They've got an epic way to finish the season. Another win under your belt. You're just unbeatable. How was that out there today? It's been a bit of a mixture of uh, wet and dry. Yeah, it was really hard. Probably the toughest race of the season with my brother in the final. Uh, he was pushing me so hard. He I was really right struggled. behind you, wasn't he? Yeah, he was so close. He, uh, he tried a few moves, but I just managed to fend him off because I missed a few gears as well. So uh, I was really struggling for pace, yeah. but I just managed to fend him off. So, yeah, really good race. You did. I mean, you drove fantastically, as always, but he was right on your tail in that corner at the bottom of the track there on the loose. And we almost thought that he had you, but you managed to pull it back again and pull a bit of a gap on him and take the winning line? Yeah, like one, winning nine rounds out of nine, I couldn't be happier, but I really didn't deserve this one because Tom, <laughs> Tom was all over the back of me. I think you both deserved it, but excellent race by both of you. Hopefully, we'll be talking to you later on in the show. Let's wait and get a confirmation of your championship points for the overall win. But for now, congratulations on your A final win. Yeah, thank you. No matter the result for the, uh, the, the overall, I just want to say a big thanks to everyone that's helped us through the year. Uh, my mechanics, Tubby and Fudge, and uh, all of my sponsors. So, yeah, big thanks. Now it's on to the Steve Gaunt Trailer Hire pre-1995 Classic Division and returnee, former champion Sean Buckley in his escort is on pole. 
two heat wins for him, one win for Darren Grimston, the local man in the yellow Vauxhall Nova. They lead the grid away. There's a gap on the outside where Martin Peel's Peugeot should have been. He's at the back of the grid. He jumped the start in the first running, and he's kicking up debris as he makes his way down the pit wall there from the back of the grid. It's Buckley and Grimston together into the first corner. Grimston takes the lead on the outside. Martin Peel runs wide onto the gravel, nearly loses it. Ryan Stutchbury in the Peugeot 205 up into third behind Buckley. And Buckley's gone. He nearly takes out Stutchbury as he spins onto the infield there. So Sean Buckley, the Welshman, the former champion, spins to the back of the field. Darren Grimston, the early leader, but he's not uh, registered for the championship. He's only in as a one-off. So it's Ryan Stutchbury, technically the race leader, in second place. Martin Peel's come through right down the outside of everybody up into third. Remember, he was moved to the back of the grid after jumping the start in the first running of this race. And he has got Ryan Taylor's BMW E30 behind him. Taylor very sideways there. Now, did he hold that, Ryan Taylor, in the BMW? Yes, he is there ahead of David Ewan, the man from Cumbria in the Ford Fiesta Evo with the Mitsubishi engine. Then we've got David Martin in the uh, sister car to uh, Ryan Stutchbury's machine. Two Peugeot 205s run by the Hangover Rallycross team. David Ewan ploughs through the gravel on the outside of Clervo, the farmer from Cumbria. The smoke coming from his car, hopefully that's not too terminal. Darren Grimston leads it, Ryan Stutchbury shadowing him. Ryan Taylor and uh, Stutchbury battling for the championship in the Steve Gaunt Trailer Hire Classic Division this year. Taylor looking set to win, unless Stutchbury does something special and Taylor hits problems here. But it's Darren Grimston, the local man out in front, only enters at one or two uh, meetings a year here at Croft with his Vauxhall Nova, and he leads this pre-1995 Classic A final. A couple of non-starters in this one, Scott Cartledge, who won the B final his escort Cosworth not coming out for this one. We also haven't got Nigel Murray with his Vauxhall Nova. The other B final qualifier, Ian Clark, with his Mini, is running at the back of the field. He's dropped behind the recovering Sean Buckley in the Mark II Escorts. Buckley won two heats, Darren Grimston won one. Ryan Taylor in position to win the uh, pre-95 Classic Championship at the moment, just ahead of David Ewan, the two blue cars further back, but it's still Grimston from Stutchbury. Darren Grimston, as we mentioned, won't score any points for uh, this win because he's not uh, championship registered, only out as a, a one-off in this final round. David Ewing in the Fiesta. Had a few mechanical problems with that car over the last couple of years, but uh, this year has been his best season for some time. He's up there chasing Ryan Taylor, the champion-elect in the BMW. The other BMW of Richard Todd we should have seen out in this one. Unfortunately, he broke down in practice and not able to race. David Ewing in the Fiesta still ahead of Sean Buckley. David Ewing has been helping uh, regular Rallycross official turn racer Stephanie Wodge with her debut today in another of his Fiestas, making her first Rallycross appearance. She finished third in the B final in David's uh, spare car. Still Darren Grimston's Nova who leads the way ahead of uh, Ryan Stutchbury. Sean Buckley closing right back up on uh, the BMW there. Ewing's got ahead of Ryan Taylor, who goes wide. Buckley is going through. And Taylor won't want to drop back too far in his uh, BMW E30. He's looking for the championship today in his first season of Rallycross. Ryan Taylor had a very impressive year indeed. He's down into sixth place now, though. Grimston has pulled out uh, a lead of around one and three quarter seconds over Ryan Stutchby now. Still that little bit of smoke from uh, the Fiesta of David Ewing. Side by side between Buckley and Taylor further back. And Ryan Stutchbury pulling off. Problems for the Peugeot. So he's out of what was effectively the race lead, the highest point scorer. And that uh, has uh, pretty much handed the title to Ryan Taylor, sadly, for Ryan Stutchbury. He's out of the race. So Martin Peel in the black and yellow 205, only in his uh, second BTRDA Rallycross meeting, I believe, is going to finish as the uh, top point scorer. David Ewing can do something special here. They're uh, into the final lap now. Darren Grimston's heading for victory. He's out on his own now. And Buckley is catching Ryan Taylor in the BMW. Can David Ewing in that rather smoky Ford Fiesta Evo with the Mitsubishi power plant catch Martin Peel here? He's on his bumper as they head through the old chicane. It's going to be a win for Grimston, but the contest is on to be the top point scorer. 
David Ewing looking on the inside here, down the back straight, he's almost onto the grass there. Side by side into the hairpin for the last time. Ewan's there on the inside, throws it up the inside. He's got ahead of Martin Peel, but can he turn it back in time? I don't think he's quite going to do it. He's sideways, Peel gets back ahead. They're going to crash through the finish line if they're not careful. Never mind, cross it. Who's going to get there in front? It's going to be Peel ahead of Ewan. Grimston's taken the win. Peel will take second. Then it's Ewan, Ryan Taylor. He's provisionally the champion with uh, Ryan Stutchby not finishing. And next home, Sean Buckley. David Martin in the... Uh, Second of the 205s comes home, and finally Ian Clark with his Mini. Very good racing indeed there from the Steve Gaunt Trailers pre-95 classic category. Ian Clark comes in as the final finisher with the door open, Martin Shanker style on his Mini. Looking to retain the classic Mini category title for this year. As the only finisher in their A-final, I believe he's done it. So congratulations to our race winners and champions in the classic division, Darren Grimston taking the win. With him not being registered for the championship, it's Martin Peel who takes the top points, just over half a second clear of David Ewing after that frantic finish. Then Ryan Taylor, Sean Buckley and David Martin completing the top six. Ian Clark, the other finisher. In terms of the points in the classic division, Ryan Taylor finishes on top ahead of Ryan Stutchbury who has the consolation of the classic super modified title and David Ewing taking third after a fine season in the Fiesta Evo. Well done to our Classic Division. So Martin, that was a great drive. You came over the line in second place. However, you've got the championship points because the first place driver isn't actually part of the championship. So, bonus for you. Yeah, it's did, good. did you enjoy that out there? Yeah, it's been a really good day. The weather was a bit uh, challenging at first. First thing this morning, very wet and cold. So it's good to see everything's changed and it's been a really good day. Um, good drive. Uh, if, I'd had, if I hadn't jumped the uh, start and put to the back, it might have been a different race. But yeah, it was good. Second place is still good, and Second you've got the points. Good. Absolutely, that's the main thing. So it's been a good day. Thanks to uh, all my team for helping out, and uh, thanks to everyone involved. It's been a really good day. The guys at Croft have been fantastic, and uh, yeah, made for a good day out. Brilliant. So you've done a couple of rounds with us this year. Yes. Are you going to come back next year? Uh, we're going to see what the uh, the diary looks like for next year. Hopefully, we'll get around to doing most of the rounds next year. But we'll uh, we'll just see what diary commitments are like. But with fingers crossed. Hopefully, so you obviously suit this track. Um, you're familiar with it, and the car suits it well as well. Yeah. So hopefully, we'll see you back. Yeah, with a bit of luck, we'll be back next year with some budget to be able to do it. Excellent. Look forward to seeing you then. Great. Thank you. Some superb rally cross action so far, despite the changeable conditions here at Croft Circuit at round nine of the Autosport International BTRDA. Clubman's Rallycross Championship. The drivers doing their utmost to provide the very best of motorsport entertainment. Next we go into the Mel Williams Tyres Production category. Two heat wins for Dale Ford in the Saxo. He's on pole. One win for Poland's Jarek Sokowieski. He's alongside. And completing the front row, Luke Mason in the Peugeot 106. A poor start for Jarek Sokowieski. He drops back into the pack, Joe Miskauskas trying to come through on the inside, rubbing shoulders with Keith Kershaw, the Irishman in the green Peugeot. It's Dale Ford who's got the lead. Sue Lane going around the outside in a second, and who's that spinning off at the back? That's Miskauskas. The Lithuanian driver spins off in the Citroen C2. There's three drivers in this race who could take the title. Keith Kershaw is one of them. He's back in the pack. Another is Andrew Smith in the yellow and silver Renault Clio, the man from Swansea. And Luke Mason is another, and he makes contact there with Andrew Smith. Fair bit of rubbing and bumping and boring in the early stages here, but Dale Ford, the pole sitter, has got away at the front. Second is Sue Lane in her Honda Civic. Luke Mason, newcomer this year in the ex-Richard Todd car, in third place in the Peugeot 106. Then we've got Andrew Smith. Fifth is Nathan Jones. Now, he qualified through uh, in the B final, finished second to Tom Edmonds in the MGZR, the top two in the B final, qualifying onto the A final grid. So a good start for Nathan Jones up in fifth place. Sixth is Keith Kershaw. Now he needs to make a bit of progress up the field, the Irishman, if he's going to stay in contention for the title. It is going to be very close at the top between him, Andrew Smith and Luke Mason. There is Kershaw, the green and blue Peugeot. Made a bit of contact with Joe Miskauskas off the line. He's trying to get ahead of Nathan Jones in the black Honda Civic. It's Dale Ford who leads the way. Smith running wide there out of the... Uh, Old chicane on the back straights. Ford leads it. Looking for, if memory serves me right, his second round win this year. Sue Lane going well up there in the Honda in second place. 
Jarek Sukowieski well down, he made a poor start. Tom Edmonds behind him in the MGZR. And then we've got Johnny Crisp in his Ford KA. Joe Miskauskas is still going, but a long way behind after spinning on the first corner. Ford leads it from Sue Lane, under pressure now from Luke Mason. All the championship contenders in the midfield at the moment. Any one of three drivers can still win this title. It's hotly contested category this year. Certainly with the biggest entry as well. 22 cars in the Mel Williams tyres production category at Croft today. Great to see the sun is out for the finals. We did have a bit of snow first thing this morning when the cars went out for the practice sessions. Thankfully the weather clearing up. Bad weather can be uh, all part of Rallycross. These cars built for tough off-road conditions. Gale 4 continues to lead. Luke Mason going for the outside and goes into second place as they come onto the tarmac. That was a cheeky move by the little Peugeot. Luke Mason now second. Andy Smith still with that bit of damage to the right front of his Renault Clio, the Welshman in fourth place and we've got Nathan Jones and Keith Kershaw still further back in sixth place at the moment. It's going to be very close in terms of the point standings in this one at the end of this A5. Keith Kershaw needs to try and move up the field here. Still behind Nathan Jones who qualified through the B final, managed to spring through the field at the start. It was the poor start by Jarek Sokovieski that uh, caused all the confusion in the pack. There is Kershaw on the tail of Nathan Jones's Honda. Dale Ford's getting away at the front of the field. Now into his fifth lap. Sue Lane still in, set in third place behind Luke Mason. Oh, and Sue Lane in trouble. Her front suspension's collapsed. She's going off in nearly into the pit wall there. She just about got the car stopped. Sue Lane very much out of the race. The front suspension collapsing on the Honda. So that means that uh, Andrew Smith is now in third place in the Clio. That'll improve his chances of the championship. And Keith Kershaw up to fifth. He needs to try and get ahead of Nathan Jones. In fact, he has got ahead of Nathan Jones. So Kershaw now fourth. And I think, by my calculations anyway, that puts him in a position to become the champion this year. It will be very, very close in the final reckoning though. Coming around to start the last lap, Luke Mason has closed the gap to Dale Ford. He really needs to get ahead of Ford here to stand a chance of the title. Joe Miskauskas in trouble. We saw him spin earlier on. Now the car goes up in a cloud of steam. Now it looks like a broken radiator there for Joe Miskauskas. The Lithuanian is out of the race. So the Steve Gaunt trailers sponsored and Saxo of Dale Ford continues to lead from Luke Mason. Then Smith, Kershaw, Jones further back in fifth. Jarek Sokowieski is still sixth. The Polish driver in his Saxo. He won the previous round at Blyton in Lincolnshire. I don't think they're going to catch the 704 of Dale Ford here. Driven superbly. He missed all the fun and the mayhem at the start. There's a little bit more fun going on at the back. Tom Edwards and Johnny Crisp battling through the chicane there at the back. But it's going to be a win for Dale Ford in number 704. A flag to flag victory for the Saxo. Second will go to Luke Mason. Now, will that be enough for the championship? Keith Kershaw moving up on the outside, but Andy Smith just holds him off for third place. Nathan Jones is fifth. See what all that means among the points protagonists in just a moment. But well done to Dale Ford taking the win. Keeping his head while uh, seeming everyone else was losing theirs behind. Joe Miskauskas, meanwhile, has brewed up in the Citroen C2. So the win goes to Dale Ford, but a couple of seconds ahead of Luke Mason. Andrew Smith third, ahead of Keith Kershaw, then Nathan Jones and Jarek Sokowieski completing the top six. Tom Edmonds and Johnny Crisp were the other finishers. Joe Miskauskas and Sue Lane were the retirements. As for the production points, then Keith Kershaw takes the championship by a single point. Andy Smith and Luke Mason joint second. It doesn't get much closer than that. One point separating the top three in the points in the Mel Williams tyres production category. Dale, that was a bit of an action-packed A final. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. It's dried out now out there a little bit this afternoon. Yeah. Have you been um, facing any challenges with the car and the conditions today? I haven't, no. It's, it's gone really well today. It's, it's really stood it today. It, yeah, it's perfect. You were definitely fast on the pace there in the air final, so it's a well-deserved win. There was a lot going on behind you, though. Did you manage to actually see any, or no, were you just looking no. forward? No, I didn't see anything behind. I just did the, just kept my eyes forward and 
just keep it clean in front, yeah. really. Yeah. Definitely. And this is only your second time at Croft, is that right? It is, yeah. How yeah. are you enjoying the track? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah it's a good yeah. track. It's got some long straights, it's it quite has, a good yeah. bit of speed down there. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fast track, yeah. yeah. And have you enjoyed your season with the BTRD this year? I have, yeah. yeah. Will you be coming back? Definitely. Excellent. 100%, yeah. We'll look forward to seeing you again next year, then. Thank you very much. Some cracking rally cross action to say the least here at Croft so far today. There's plenty more where that came from coming up in just a few minutes' time. Welcome back to Croft Circuit here at the final round of the 2018 Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rally Cross Championship. We now move on to focus on the AS Performance Super Modified category, a whole variety of different cars in this series. We join the B final a couple of laps in with Fred Ling in his Ford Fiesta ST setting the pace up front ahead of Gary Mitchell in his Ford Puma V6. Top two finishers from this race move on to the back of the A final grid. Ford focus of Simon Cofield in third place, but Ling with a healthy lead at the moment. Look out for Slavomir Volok, the Polish driver in the red and black BMW. He's raced a Ford Fiesta in this uh, series in the past, but that proved unreliable, so he switched for today to this uh, new BMW M3. The other runners further back, including uh, David Brown in his Ford Puma, and at the back of the field, Stratis Atistefanis, the Greek driver in his BMW Mini. Simon Cofield and Slavomir Volok moving up to challenge Gary Mitchell, turning to racing this year after missing uh, quite a few months of action with a broken leg and a tangle there. Cofield goes around, tangling with Volok in the BMW. Cofield rejoins over the grass infield at the hairpin. Volok up into third position. He'll now go after Gary Mitchell in his uh, Ford Puma. David Brown and the other Puma not too far behind now, but Fred Ling with a very clear lead of over five seconds over Gary Mitchell. And through Clervo on the tarmac, Volok sideways, almost over the kerbs there. A spectacular looking machine, the BMW, but it's young Fred Ling. He could be on for third place in the championship if he can get through to the A final today. Up there in the lead, his first season in rallycross, I'm switching from autocross racing on the grass. Slavomir Volok having a look down the inside on Gary Mitchell, he's going through into the hairpin. BMW goes up into second place. First time I've seen the uh, E46 M3 shape of BMW in this uh, championship. We're into the last lap now in this AS Performance Super Modified B final. Volok holding off Mitchell for second place. We head down towards Clervo for what will be the last time. BMW runs wide, goes over the gravel. I think Gary Mitchell is starting to slow up there. He's dropped back in the Puma. Fred Ling has got this race under control in the Fiesta. Well ahead as they go down the back straight. I can't see Gary Mitchell. I think he may have pulled up somewhere on this final lap. But it's going to be a win for Fred Ling in this five lap B final. He's heading onto the back of the grid for the A final. So is Slavomir Volok in the BMW E46. Around the hairpin they come for the final time. Ling takes the chequered flag. Second place will go to Slavomir Volok. Simon Cofield will be next home in the Ford Focus. Looks like we have lost Gary Mitchell on that uh, final lap. Check out the results of that one then. Fred Ling, the winner by nearly eight seconds ahead of Slavomir Volok at the flag. Simon Cofield in third in the Ford Focus. Stratis Hatsistefanis, the Greek driver, fourth in his BMW Mini. And David Brown, the final finisher in his uh, Ford Puma. The retirement's there for Gary Mitchell on the last lap, unfortunately. So well done to Fred Ling and Slavomir Volok. They go onto the back of the grid to join the uh, top names in the A final here at Croft in the AS Performance Super Modified category. We now move on to focus on the A final. Double heat winner Dave Bellaby returning to the series today on pole position with the Lotus Exige. The other heat won by the Ford KA of points leader Tony Lynch. His championship rival Patrick Ryan in the Nova completing the front row. Lotus rockets away from pole position as does the similar example of Mike Dresser from the second row of the grid. The two Lotus is so quick in a straight line. They go first and second into Clervo for the first time. Tony Lynch in third, ahead of his season-long rival Patrick Ryan. Then we've got Nick Angrave in the Honda Integra and the BMW of Polish driver Slavomir Volok, who previously raced a Ford Fiesta. 
very smart new BMW for him. He qualified through the B final, finishing behind Fred Ling in his Fiesta. Fred, unfortunately, failing to take the start in this A final. Tony Lynch right on the rear bumper, underneath the rear wing almost, of Mike Dresser for second place. The yellow Lotus holds him off. Further back in the order, we've got the two BMW Minis, another Polish driver, Christoph Kozon and Leanne Sedgwick, another of the leading ladies of Rallycross, at the back of the field along with Paul Johnson in his BMW M3. A very varied field, as we always see in the AS Performance Super Modified category. The two Lotuses out in front, local man Dave Bellaby, leads the way, we've seen his daughters competing in Rallycross, Paige and Drew Bellaby over the last few years as well. Mike Dresser up there in second place, vastly experienced performer. Raced all over Europe in Rallycross. Third place is Tony Lynch. Had a chance of winning the uh, overall championship this year, but lost his previous A final win at the last round at Blyton to Patrick Ryan, the Irishman in the Vauxhall Nova. They have fought tooth and nail all season, these two, fighting for third place here in this race. The first four starting to pull clear now. They're having a go at Mike Dresser for second place. That Lotus stronger on the tarmac in a straight line, but the other cars seemingly stronger on the loose bits, and they nearly tangle there and go into the gravel at Sir Clervo. Good save, Tony Lynch. He's up in the second place, blasts Mike Dresser with a face full of dirt as uh, they come out of the gravel trap there through the Hawthorne Bend. Patrick Ryan moving up as well now, but it's Dave Bellaby clear in the lead in the white Lotus, sponsored by Fuchs Lubricants. A spinner at the back, that's Christoph Kozon. I think he may have tangled with Leanne Sedgwick in the battle of the BMW Minis further back. Tony Lynch up there in second place in the Lucas Oil-sponsored Ford KA. 2.3-litre engine squeezed under the bonnet of that little hatchback. Dave Bellaby continues to dominate on his local circuit here. Slavomir Volok, ex-Ford Fiesta racer, up there behind him. And uh, I think there's something wrong with Mike Dresser's Lotus there. Yes, he's pulling off. It looked like there was something flapping underneath the car, so possibly a problem with the under tray there. And Dresser has pulled off from uh, third place. And there's Christoph Kozon. We've seen him out in the uh, production category in a Saxo in the past. Dave Bellaby leads this super modified A final. Tony Lynch is going to take the uh, class category by the look of things. He needed to win this race outright to take the overall uh, BTRDA uh, Clubman's Rally Cross Championship, but uh, that was rendered relatively academic when uh, he lost his uh, win on the road at the previous round at Blyton following a steward's inquiry. Patrick Ryan awarded the win there. Leanne Sedgwick is up to fifth in her BMW Mini. Paul Johnson's BMW M3 next in the order, further back in the uh, field here. But they're fairly well strung out at the front of the pack with the demise of Mike Dresser's Lotus. It's going to be another Lotus that takes the win. Unless uh, Tony Lynch does something heroic on the last hairpin. He's not going to get close enough, I don't think. And it's the local man from North Yorkshire in the Lotus, Dave Bellamy into the final hairpin. Second place will go to Tony Lynch. He's going to wrap up the class championship in his very special Ford KA. Bellaby comes in to win it. Lynch will be second, and Patrick Ryan will take third. They're well clear of their opposition. Just waiting to see who comes home in fourth place. Looks like it's going to be Slavomir Volok in the BMW across the line. And he's clear in turn of Leanne Sedgwick, who will take fifth. The battle is still on for sixth. Paul Johnson in his BMW M3. There's Sedgwick across the line in fifth position. And Christoph Kozon is going to get ahead. I think Paul Johnson's got a problem with the BMW because Kozon comes through to take sixth. Mike Dresser and Nick Angrave failing to finish. We saw Nick Angrave pull off early on in that race. So the win goes to Dave Bellaby in the Lotus X Siege by a couple of seconds ahead of Tony Lynch. Patrick Ryan taking third place ahead of Slavomir Volok. Good drive from him, qualifying through the B final. Leon Sedgwick and Christoph Kozon complete the top six. Paul Johnson, the other finisher. Mike Dresser and Nick Angrave were the retirements. In terms of the super modified points, Tony Lynch finishes on top following his season long battle with uh, Patrick Ryan. The impressive first season from Fred Ling in the Fiesta. He takes third in the AS Performance super modified final point standings. Dave, you won the race. I know you're not part of the championship points, but that must feel really good to win. Yes, 
yeah, it was quite a good race out there. Mike Dress with another um, Elise, very similar car, and um, Tony Lynch, he's a real hard racer as well. So, yeah, no, I was very pleased. Yeah. I can see they were pushing you, they were quite close behind you at various points around the circuit. Did you feel the pressure, or were you just looking ahead? No, I don't really do pressure. Yeah. I've never have. Quite um, calm. Yeah. yeah, just keep watching and making sure that the gap's enough. Um, and that way you just do enough to stay where you are. If they're starting to get close, then you have to push it that little yeah. bit more usually. Well, some drivers out to win titles, some out to let their hair down, have a bit of end of season fun and entertainment here at Croft in the final round of the Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship here at the Croft Circuit today. It's now time to focus on the uh, production 4x4 category sponsored by Albertech Racing. Unfortunately, only two starters for our final. It should have been a championship battle between our camera car driven by Dan Beatty and the similar Subaru of Paul Davis. Unfortunately, Paul Davis, his engine failed in the heats and he's unable to start the final. So Dan Beatty has already wrapped up the championship by default. Also a non-starter, the Nissan Pulsar of James Lyon, who won a heat earlier on. Dan Beatty winning the other two, so it's just Beatty and Dominic Flipney in the black Subaru who remain for this final. Albertech Racing, the sponsors of this championship this year, team owned by Andy Scott, run Peugeot's in Rallycross for many years, competing in the European Rallycross Championship over the last few seasons. Dan Beatty, the new champion, then leads the way in the red Subaru. Indeed, in the last round at uh, Blyton Park, he was the only finisher in the final after a number of breakdowns for the cars behind him. So Dominic Flipney, his only opposition here in this Albertech Racing production 4x4A final. We ride with Dan as we head down into the right-hander at Clervo. It's already fairly well clear of Dominic Flipney in the black Subaru, previously competed in Suzuki Swifts in uh, Rallycross before making move to this much more powerful four-wheel drive machine for 2018. He's not able to live with the pace of Dan Beatty here. He's been fighting hard with Paul Davis, the reigning champion over the course of the season, but Paul, engine trouble in the heats and unable to start the final, sadly. So Dan Beatty will win the championship almost by default. Nice little sideways movement there from Dominic Flitney through the hairpin, almost rally style. Subaru Impreza, of course, very well known as a rally car over the years. Colin McRae, Richard Burns and all that. BT taking a perfect line through Clervo over the kerbs. Flitney trying to follow in his wheel tracks, learning from the new champion. I see a bit of smoke there though from Dan BT from uh, Dominic Flitney's car. Let's hope he's not about to expire. I'm sure Dan BT doesn't want to be the only finisher in the A-final for the second round running. Looks as if he didn't know what to do on the uh, last lap at Sir uh, Blyton. On board with him as he flicks the car into the hairpin. Flitney does likewise. He uh, displaying good style here. Morning Flitney in the flip speed Subaru. Into lap four. Back onto the tarmac come the two Impressors. Shame we haven't got James Lyon out there as well. The Nissan Pulsar. This is the car we saw Darren Clark win the round at Lydon Hill in when uh, Dan Beatty and Paul Davies were too busy scrapping with each other and lost the lead. There's definitely some smoke coming from the back of Dominic Flitney's car now as we ride with Beatty through the chicane onto the loose. You can see it's becoming fairly uneven and uh, talking of uneven, that was a bit of an uneven exit from the chicane for Dominic Flitney, ran wide onto the grass. Over the bumps goes Dan Beatty down into the hairpin. Flitney really throws it in once again. He's exploring the limits of his new car. Two laps to go. Away goes Dan Beatty. Set to wrap up the title with a win. It's close coming into this round between Beatty and the blue Subaru of Paul Davis. Tracy Bennett will take third in the points, I think, by default. She's not here today. Blew her engine in uh, a previous round. That's been Subaru's almost all the way this year, beaten only by Darren Clark in the Nissan Pulsar at Lydon Hill. Let's see the BTRDA back at Lydon Hill this year after a couple of years away. Lydon and Croft, the two 
homes of Rallycross, really. The first two venues to stage the sport, Lydon first in 1967. Croft followed soon after as the northern home of the sport. Since then, many others have joined in. Pembrey, Brands Hatch, and many more. And on the last lap now, that smoking uh, Subaru in second place, Dominic Flipney, trying his best to keep going to the finish. Hope he isn't going to blow the engine. Overshoots Hawthorne a little there. Well, Dan Beatty ready to wrap up the title. He was beaten to the title by Paul Davis last year. No danger of that happening this year, though. Beatty has got the title sewn up. He's into the hairpin for the final time. Flip knee in his wheel tracks once again, just a few car lengths further back, and Dan Beatty comes across the line to take the A final win in the Albertin Racing production 4x4 four four category and secure the championship. Well then, indeed, to Dan Beatty, a smoky Dominic Flipney comes home in second place. Dan Beatty gets ready to start his championship celebrations. Beatty taking the win by a margin of around three seconds from Dominic Flipney. They were the only two starters in that Albertech Racing production 4x4A final. Paul Davis and James Lyon not making it out, unfortunately. And in the points, Dan Beatty finishes some 10 points clear of Paul Davis in the provisional point standings with Tracy Bennett, who was absent today with engine dramas, further back in third place. Congratulations then to Dan Beatty, Albertech Racing production 4x4 champion. Dan, you were on the pace out there today. Yeah, it was a hard one with the weather changing so much as well. First time I've driven in the snow and no rally cross, so that was interesting. Yeah, snow this morning, sun this afternoon, but uh, both of them you were definitely on the pace, so the conditions don't seem to phase you. They do a little bit, but I'm just very cautious and I think not making mistakes helps. But then when the sun's come out and it's dried out a bit, it can go a bit quicker. Yeah, it's more yeah. a lot more fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, your main competitor, Paul, um, unfortunately retired, so he wasn't... Uh, behind you as close as he is normally so did that take the pressure off or was Dom in the in the other car too close still putting the pressure on to be fair all three of them were, were all just as good as each other today so it's a shame that two of them had to drop out because it's not the way you want to win when people retire him but that's, that's how it is it's a good reward though you've driven well all season um, hopefully unofficially this is your production 4x4 class win as well yeah fingers crossed that's the way it's looking so I'm over the moon with that that's yeah, brilliant absolutely are you going to come back to do another season not next year, but I'm aiming for the year after. Any changes to the car? Only a few small changes, yeah. just repairs mainly and maintenance, yeah. yeah. Well, if the formula works, why change it, hey? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Brilliant. OK, well, good luck and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Now it's on to the most powerful, the fastest cars here today, the uh, race bread auctions Clubman 4x4 category. A trio of Irishmen on the front row of the grid. Oli O'Donovan in pole position with the Fiesta, rockets away into the lead. One car hasn't got off the grid. Mad Mark Watson in the Citroen Zara, left standing on the line. He's out of it. It's Ollie O'Donovan, the former British Rallycross champion, who leads away in his Ford Fiesta. In second place, the uh, Ford Focus, that's Derek Job. And Tommy Graham, the man famous for his Mark II Escort over the last few years in the ex-Dave Bellaby Ford Fiesta in third place. So it's Ireland 1, 2 and 3 around the opening lap. Mike Manning, the Welshman, ex-Subaru racer in fourth place in his new Fiesta. He's the fastest and most powerful cars we have here today. Great to have the race bread auctions Clubman 4x4 category back again here at Sir Croft. They come round to complete the opening lap and it is Ollie O'Donovan. Look at the speed of his Ford Fiesta out in front. He's testing that car ahead of the British Championship finale which is coming up soon at Silverstone. Derek Job and Tommy Graham racing it out for second place, the Focus and the uh, older shape Fiesta. That's Dave Bellaby's old car. Tommy Graham has a look at the inside there. The multiple Irish champion. Mike Manning, the Welshman, a bit further back in his Ford Fiesta. It's Tommy Graham, famous for his very modified red Mark II Escort over the last few years. Away goes O'Donovan. Seen his son Patrick O'Donovan out in the uh, junior category today as well. Derek Job in the ex Roger Thomas Ford Focus. Roger Thomas, a former champion of this category, raced an Opel Astra as well. Their second lap then. 
O'Donovan's lead is already nearly seven and a half seconds over his fellow Irishman battling for second and third. Manning in fourth place, the local man from County Durham, Mad Mark Watson, ever the entertainer in his Citroen Zara, sadly never got off the start line. Holly O'Donovan in the clear. He's raced a whole uh, mixture of different cars in the past, including, uh, if memory serves me right, an ex-Will Gollop Peugeot. Will Gollop, one of Britain's greatest ever rallycrossers, of course, the former European champion. Holly O'Donovan has competed in the European Championship as well in the past. There's Mike Manning with the Ford Fiesta, his new acquisition back in fourth place. Still O'Donovan pulling away, nearly nine seconds clear now. So much quicker than everybody else here. Tommy Graham trying again for second place. Can he get through this time? Yes, he can. It's Hawthorne. He's been trying that for the last couple of laps, Tommy Graham. Holly O'Donovan drifts it out through the hairpin. He's way ahead of the rest. Graham now starting to clear off from Derek Job in that uh, second place. Mike Manning closing up. Can he get onto the podium here in uh, his late shape fiesta as well? Three-way battle could develop here for second as Tommy Graham not getting away as much as he would like. 14 seconds down, Ollie O'Donovan. Tommy Graham safe in second, though. Now starting to pull away O'Donovan, a 43.4 second lap. By far the quickest car we have got here today in any category. And he is driving it perfectly. Over the line he goes. Still in second, we have Tommy Graham. in second, in third rather is Derek Job. I don't think the order is uh, going to change in these closing laps. We're on the last lap now, in fact. O'Donovan onto the back straights for the last time. He's going to win this by uh, pretty much half a lap. In the last race of the day here at Croft, the final for the race spread auctions, Clubman at 4x4s. He scored a hat-trick in the heats, indeed, the only driver to win all three of his heats today. Leo Donovan is heading for the chequered flag. Comes in to take the win. Ollie O'Donovan, four wins out of four today in his Fiesta. Tommy Graham with the ex Dave Bellaby. Ford Fiesta to the come over in second place. And looks as though the red focus, the ex Roger Thomas car driven by Derek Job, is going to hold third ahead of Mike Manning, the only non Irishman out there, the Welshman in the Ford Fiesta. Well, the sun sets on the uh, Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship for 2018. Then that was the last race of the season. Won at a canter by Ollie O'Donovan. Congratulations to the Irishman. An Irish clean sweep in the race bread auctions. Clubman 4x4 final. O'Donovan winning by some 15 seconds ahead of Tommy Graham in second. Derek Job a further four seconds back in third. Mike Manning taking fourth in his Fiesta, and Mark Watson sadly failed to get off the start line in the Citroen Zara. The championship, meanwhile, already won by Nigel Burke, who was not here today in his Subaru, ahead of Andy Grant in his Ford Focus. Mike Manning scoring enough points there to take third in the Race Red Auctions Clubman 4x4 Championship for 2018. Ollie, I don't think anybody could catch your pace today. You were absolutely flying around Croft. Have you loved it? Yeah, we've had a good day. I mean, every time you get in one of these cars, you have to have a great day. But uh, no, we've used the, the, the race meet today as a test for, uh, for next week's championship. And uh, we've had a great day. The car went faultless. I mean, Tony Barley builds a great car and he could never get enough of time in it. Are you going to come and do some more championships next year with us or is this just a one-off? At the moment, we don't know. It's a bit of a mixed bag of what's happening next year, you know. Um, you never know. I mean, I wouldn't write it off. You know, I've enjoyed it. We've had a good day, so I wouldn't write it off. Excellent news. So just talking about Croft as a track, your car and your driving style seems to absolutely suit this track. Yeah, I, I do like the track. I mean, it's a very open track. It's a safe track. You can really push the boundaries there, you know. Uh, I would love to see a joker lap put into this track. It, it would be really, really good. 
and maybe a little bit of extra work, and they might be able to get the tractor running backwards as well. And then you can have double headers here, which will really put craft back into the, the map. Yeah, that would be definitely interesting from a racer's point of view. And I guess people who are travelling quite far, like yourself, are going to benefit from a double header. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, I'm all for double headers because it's a travel up here and it's a long way to come from one day's racing. But double headers, especially when you can reverse the tracks, you know, it gives us something new, a new challenge. And uh, I think it really should be the way forward for Rallycross. Well, let's see what happens in the future then. Well, thank you very much for all your entertainment on track today. You've been a pleasure to watch. Oh, no problem at all. I enjoyed every moment. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at the overall points, the final provisional points for 2018. Luke Constantine on top with nine. A final wins out of nine. Congratulations to the young gun ahead of Tony Lynch and Patrick Ryan, the two super modified battlers. Ryan Taylor from the classics and Tom Constantine rounding out the top five. Congratulations to all our winners from across the season in 2018 in the Autosport International BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship running partnership with Toyo Tyres. That just about wraps up our coverage for this year. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.